Talk back, Marsha. What we yes. got going on today? Well, let me first say that's the way you start a listening party. <laughs> <laughs> that is how you start listening party. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. But right now, our first guest, I met on the campus from the highest of seven hills at Florida A&M University. She's gone on to have a very successful career as an attorney specializing in intellectual property law. Here to help us learn what intellectual intellectual property law is and to debunk the many myths, Miss Latasha Givens. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, awesome. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you guys doing today? Really good. And welcome to the conversation. Thank you for and having me. Yes, glad you could be welcome. here. Yes. <laughs> there are so many folks who seem to be confused about what intellectual property is and how it works and how do you protect intellectual property. And so tell us in layman terms, um, what is intellectual property, and it is, is it something that needs to be protected? Yeah, sure. Um, intellectual property is creations of the mind. So um, we can start with, there's usually about four types of intellectual property. Um, you have your inventions, which are patents, um, your brands, um, which are logos and brand names to protect a company or a brand. Um, and then you have copyrights, which protect, you know, like writings and music and film and artistic work, um, visual artistic work. And then you have your trade dress or um, trade secrets, which protect things such as like the co- the formula for Coca-Cola is a trade secret. Or if you have a special barbecue recipe, that would be a trade secret. So, and those things do need to be protected because, you know, as you create intellectual property and you build a business based on that intellectual property, you know, there are people that will try to um, infringe it and basically um, base their business or make money from your goodwill that you built up over time. And so you want to protect that because if you protect intellectual property, you can license it, which is you know, which can create valuable royalty income, which, you know, for, which could, you know, create income for generations. Right. So what are the best ways to actually protect intellectual property, and does this have to be done by an attorney? It should be done by an attorney, and I'll tell you why. (laughs) You know, (laughs) I have, I, I get a lot of my clients because they try to do it themselves, and I'm not saying that you can't do it yourself, but you really need someone who understands the laws and who understands the business of intellectual property in order to protect it properly. So say, for instance, like a trademark, um, you know, that can be a company name, a logo, a tagline, a phrase. And, of course, anyone can go to the USPTO, you know, website and, you know, submit an application for a trademark protection. However, if there is something wrong with that application or if there is another trademark, that is a potential conflict or has priority rights, the trademark office will reject that application. Or if you don't submit the right information, they'll reject it. And then what usually happens is they will send back an office action. But the office action that they send back is very technical and it's very, you know, it has, um, it's versed with a lot of legalese and it's very technical. And it's like if you don't understand the law or understand the statutes that they cite, it's like you don't know what to do with it. So what ends up happening is I have a lot of clients come to me and it's like, oh, I got this office action from USPTO office and I don't understand it. So they need me to go in and fix it. So, <laughs> you know, it's you know there are laws that, you know, you have to strictly adhere to in protecting intellectual property. Um, patent law, I don't, I'm not a patent lawyer, but that is very complex. Mm-hmm. Um, you would definitely need a patent attorney to do a patent application for you. Um, and that a patent attorney is usually someone who has a technical background that may be an engineer or they may have a, you know, a medical background like bioscience or something like that. And, you know, they're dealing with highly technical um, inventions and the application is very technical. So um, you would definitely need help with that. Copyrights are a little bit easier. Um, however, you know, a lot of people will go to the copyright office and they will try to submit their own 
application to protect the copyright, but, you know, that can be a little tricky, too, if you are not sure, you know, what type of application you should choose or what's your classification for your copyright. So, you know, I think it's always good to get an attorney because, it's like I said, if you don't do it right the first time, you're still going to have to spend money, <laughs> you know, hiring someone to help you um, get through that process. 